Welcome to the Hydrogen Fuel Cell Training Series for First Responders. In this introduction, we'll cover the properties of hydrogen, fuel cell technology, safety systems, and basic response guidelines. The vehicles we encounter on the roadways are changing in general. Transportation is being electrified from hybrids to battery electric to fuel cell vehicles. As responders, we need to understand how this will impact emergency operations. The fuel cell market is global. Fuel cell electric vehicles, or FCEVs, can be found in Europe, Asia, and other parts of the world, including the U.S. The passenger vehicle market was initially launched in California and is expanding across the country along with other vehicle applications. There are many types of FCEVs, including passenger vehicles, trucks of all sizes, buses, forklifts, airport tugs, and even larger modes of transportation like rail and marine. There are also stationary applications of fuel cells for primary and backup power generation. A fuel cell electric vehicle is a type of hybrid vehicle. Hybrids incorporate more than one power source used for propulsion. We typically encounter hybrids as gasoline or diesel electric vehicles that incorporate an internal combustion engine and a high voltage electrical drive system. In FCEVs, the internal combustion engine is replaced by a hydrogen fuel cell. Fuel cell and battery electric vehicles are the two types of zero emission vehicles currently on the road. Fuel cells and vehicles use hydrogen to produce electricity. Hydrogen is a colorless and non-toxic gas which cannot be odorized. In nature, it is always bound with other elements and has to be extracted from substances that contain it, such as natural gas or water. Hydrogen gas is 14 times lighter than air, so its tendency is to rise and dissipate quickly. Its auto ignition temperature is 1085 degrees Fahrenheit, and its flammable range is 4 to 75 percent in air. For more efficient bulk storage, hydrogen can be liquefied. For it to be a liquid, it must be cooled to negative 423 degrees Fahrenheit, making it a cryogenic. Hydrogen does not burn when it's in a liquid state. However, it will revert to a gas upon warming and can then be ignited. Hydrogen gas is dispensed into the vehicle by the kilogram. The amount of potential energy in one kilogram of hydrogen is approximately equal to that found in one gallon of gasoline. Pure hydrogen fires burn with a pale blue flame and are difficult to detect. They're almost invisible to the naked eye during the day. A pure hydrogen fire gives off almost no radiant heat and no smoke. The low voltage electrical system, vehicle construction materials and methods, and standard safety features such as airbags and seatbelt pretensioners are all like those found in conventional vehicles. Components unique to fuel cell vehicles include the hydrogen storage cylinders and the electricity generating fuel cell stack. The fuel cell stack utilizes hydrogen and oxygen to generate the electricity that powers the vehicle. As the two gases are introduced to the fuel cell, an electrochemical reaction takes place, producing an electrical current. The only byproducts of this reaction are water and heat. A single fuel cell generates just under one volt DC. To produce enough power to propel the vehicle, multiple fuel cells are combined into a stack. A vehicle that needs more power will have a larger stack. Generally, the fuel cell stacks in light duty passenger vehicles generate 350 to 400 volts. Larger vehicles, such as buses, generally operate at 600 volts or more. It is important to note that while the fuel cell stack generates electricity, it does not store it. The electricity generated by the fuel cell stack is stored in the high voltage battery, which is typically comprised of lithium ion cells. On passenger vehicles, it is generally found in the area behind the rear seat or under the floor pan below the passenger compartment. On buses, the battery can be located on the roof, the rest of the high voltage system includes orange high voltage cables, electric drive motors, and other components. The high voltage electrical systems in fuel cell vehicles are the same design as those found in other electric and hybrid vehicles. The hydrogen storage cylinders for a vehicle consists of a metal or polymer liner with a composite overwrap. The cylinders are rated to a maximum storage pressure of either 35 MPa, which is approximately 5,000 PSI, or 70 MPa, which is approximately 10,000 PSI. A typical passenger vehicle stores around 5 to 7 kilograms of hydrogen, and a semi-tractor trailer can store up to 80 or more kilograms. 
The number and size of cylinders is dependent on the vehicle size and its intended use. Passenger vehicles will have one or more cylinders, which are typically installed on the underside of the vehicle towards the rear, similar to where a gasoline tank would be located in a conventional vehicle. Heavy-duty vehicles such as buses can have large capacity, lower pressure cylinders on the roof. Others, like semi-tractor trailers, can have large capacity, higher pressure cylinders in different locations, for example, behind the cab. Cylinder design requirements are rigorous, with a safety factor of two and a quarter times the storage pressure. Numerous standardized tests are conducted to qualify cylinder safety. The primary safety feature on composite cylinders is the thermally activated pressure relief device, or TPRD. Each cylinder has its own, which is designed to release hydrogen in a fire situation before the cylinder loses structural integrity. At approximately 225 degrees Fahrenheit, or 107 degrees centigrade, the system activates. When the preset temperature is reached, the gas is released through the TPRD. This is achieved by either a glass bulb breaking, releasing the piston it held in place, or a fusible plug melting, similar to a sprinkler head. Trucks and buses can take longer to vent due to the greater storage capacity. The venting is accompanied by a loud, high-pitched noise. In passenger vehicles, TPRD vents are located at the rear of the vehicle, angled toward the ground. In heavy-duty vehicles, hydrogen can be vented towards the ground or vertically. Most hydrogen tube trailers include TPRDs or PRDs with ruptured disc and either a pneumatic or manual shutoff on each individual tube. Currently, there is no consensus standard and there is the possibility of differing tube trailer arrangements and controls. During transport, all tube valves are closed per DOT requirement. Operational activities such as venting, loading, and unloading vary depending on the situation and capabilities of the tube trailer. When dispensing hydrogen to a fueling station or another stationary facility, the tube valves will not open unless directly connected to the stationary system. The stationary facility will automatically stop dispensing by shutting the valve if hydrogen gas or a fire is detected. Other redundancies include the driver slash operator's ability to close valves via a control panel and the emergency stop located on the filling slash dispensing panel. Typically, in the United States, if a TPRD or a PRD is activated due to fire impingement or another incident, only the individual cylinder will exhaust its contents. Each cylinder is an isolated system. However, when responding to an incident, it is always best practices to consult the delivery truck operator refer to the ERG, or any other available resources to better understand the system. The operator should be able to better inform first responders on unique features of the tube trailer and other considerations. Fuel cell vehicles are also equipped with sensors that will detect a hydrogen leak. If the leak is large enough, the vehicle will shut itself off. Shutdown initiates when sensors detect hydrogen levels around 50% of the LFL, or 2% hydrogen in air. Passenger vehicles typically utilize the crash sensors that deploy airbags and seatbelt pretensioners to also shut down the high voltage and fuel cell systems. Trucks and buses may utilize sensors for this as well, although they may not be tied directly into a supplemental restraint system. When the vehicle is turned on, normally closed solenoids on the cylinders are powered open by a low voltage current. This allows hydrogen to flow to the fuel cell stack through stainless steel fuel lines. Pressures are stepped down by a regulator at the cylinder to around 100 psi or less. Simultaneously, normally open relays are powered into the closed position in the high voltage battery. This completes the circuit and allows current to flow to the electric motor in the battery. The vehicle does a system check and then indicates that it's ready to go. As the vehicle accelerates, the stack generates electricity that flows to the electric motor or to the battery, as needed. When the vehicle is turned off, the solenoids close, stopping the flow of hydrogen from the cylinders and the high voltage relays in the battery open, breaking the circuit and cutting the flow of electricity.
When conducting a size up of an incident scene, identify the types of vehicles involved. To determine if it's a fuel cell vehicle, look for badging on the exterior of the vehicle or under the hood on the plastic covers. Physical characteristics can be used to distinguish alternative fueled vehicles, or AFVs, from conventional ones. While this may not identify a fuel cell vehicle specifically, it will give an indication there are different hazards present. For example, the identification of cylinders could mean it's either a hydrogen fuel cell or a compressed natural gas vehicle. If there are orange cables or a high voltage battery present, it could be a hybrid or battery electric vehicle. However, if cylinders and a high voltage system are both identified, it's likely to be a fuel cell vehicle. Since there is no internal combustion engine in a fuel cell vehicle, be aware of the silent movement hazard. Don't assume it's off because you don't hear it running. As with other alternative fuel vehicles, an approach at a 45 degree angle is recommended. Because hydrogen is odorless, utilize a combustible gas meter to aid in detecting any leaks. Also, be sure to use the relative response chart for your meter to get an accurate reading on hydrogen levels. Also consider that carbon monoxide sensors have a cross sensitivity to hydrogen. If your CO reading goes up in an area that is unlikely to have it, hydrogen may be present. Additionally, a thermal imaging camera can be useful in detecting any pure hydrogen fires. Ensure that the vehicle is secured from movement with wheel chocks and the parking brake, and then place the vehicle in park. Next, determine if the vehicle still has power by looking at the driver's side dash display for activity. If the vehicle is on, shut it down and then disconnect the low voltage battery per the manufacturer's emergency response guide procedures. This process stops the flow of hydrogen from the cylinders and shuts down the fuel cell stack. It also isolates high voltage electricity to the battery. If possible, identify any damage to the hydrogen fuel storage and distribution system as well as the high voltage system. If the hydrogen system is damaged, continue to monitor for any potential leaks. When conducting a damage assessment of a FCEV hydrogen cylinder due to an incident, look for dents, abrasions, gouges, frayed fibers, delamination, and burns. Check for damage to the hydrogen cylinder's ancillary components, including bends or fractures in piping, or supporting structure, loose fittings, or other components, and any damage to valves or venting stacks. Also consider any blistering or discoloring due to UV exposure. This could indicate the overall age of the cylinder. Any of these damages could be indications of a hydrogen release, creating a fire hazard, and in severe cases, cylinder rupture. For further detail on visual inspection of gas cylinders and other best practices, please reference guidelines provided by the Compressed Gas Association, the International Organization for Standardization, and or the Canadian Standards Association. If high voltage cables are compromised, avoid contact. If the lithium ion battery is damaged, follow the NHTSA recommended guidelines, which are covered in greater detail later in this video series. It's important that we keep up with what's happening in hydrogen fuel cell technology. The H2 Tools website is a useful resource, and so is the Center for Hydrogen Safety, the California Fuel Cell Partnership, and the Department of Energy Alternative Fuels Data Center. You can also use the manufacturer's emergency response guides. In the future, we will continue to see an increase in the use of fuel cell vehicles, the trailers that transport the hydrogen, and the stations that dispense it. It is important to identify and review your department's SOPs on responding to alternative fuel vehicle incidents involving fuel cell vehicles. If these are not already in place, it should be a priority to make the necessary updates to incorporate this information. Now that you have a basic understanding of fuel cell vehicles and how they operate, you can watch the other videos in this series to learn more about fueling stations, the transport of hydrogen, and how to handle fires and extrications involving fuel cell vehicles.